Zach Eady, for the past two seasons, has been the most dominant player in college basketball, recently being named the two-time Naismith Player of the Year, which has only been done two other times in history. Edie has an individual college resume that stacks up well with anyone in at least the past 20 years. However, he has always been perceived as the type of player that does well in college but won't translate to the NBA. Last year, after his first College Player of the Year season, he tested out the NBA waters and found that his draft stock was somewhere in the mid-second to not being drafted at all. This led him back to Purdue for one more year, but after this year, things seem to be changing. Most mock drafts have Edie going early second at the latest, with some even going as far as putting him first round or even borderline lottery. So what has changed? Edie hasn't significantly shifted his playing style as he's still the same huge back to the basket big man he's always been for the most part. Scouts have clearly been encouraged by something in his game however, so today we're going to break down his game, the positives, the negatives, and finally, how I see him translating to the NBA and if scouts truly are correct to upgrade Edie on their draft boards over last season. So, starting out with his most dominant trait, his interior offensive game. Obviously, this aspect of his game is where he makes the biggest difference on the court. This is clearly driven by his size, which at 7'4 and around 300 pounds, he is huge even for NBA standards. The NBA is going more towards small ball, obviously, and Edie is the antithesis of that. Now, his ability to guard versus a small ball lineup certainly is a question we need to answer, but on the offensive end, I see no reason why, when Edie is on the court, that he won't be able to absolutely dominate in the post. I mean, you have guys like Draymond getting big minutes at the center position, and I don't care how good of a defender he is, you put a 6'6 player on Zach Eady, even at the NBA level, you will have to throw a double team at him to stop him. Now, when you look at Edie's game and why he's so dominant, it isn't just his size. You've seen big college players before, but Edie is as dominant as he is because he's big and he's skilled. He has some really solid moves in the post that have only gotten better over the past couple years. His drop step and his hook shot have pretty much always been a factor as long as he's been good, but this season, he's really worked on becoming more of an ambidextrous player. He has more ability to go to his left than he did in the years past, and that has led to a more diverse offensive game. Overall, his interior scoring is what has made him a two-time Naismith Player of the Year, and I highly doubt that that skill set won't translate to the NBA. While there are certainly big concerns with how he translates as a whole, I don't see any way that if he's put on the floor and a team tells him to just back down his defender and score, that he won't be able to do that at a high level. Zach Eady does not shoot the ball from deep. It's just not part of his game. However, Eady has always claimed that he has the ability to shoot threes, saying at the NBA Combine last year, Quote, I've always been able to hit threes. With the offense at Purdue, there was no reason for me to shoot from range because I could get better shots from other places. End quote. While a lot of this is simply a guessing game, it does appear that Edie has more of a shooting touch than he's given credit for. He did hit one three this past season, and while he did bank it in, he is shooting 50% from three on the season now, which is a bona fide weapon, to be honest with you. No, but, but really looking at his practices, he shows good shot form, good consistency, and a repeatable release. I have no idea if he would be called on to shoot more in the NBA versus college, as you can only take so much away from shooting in practice if you haven't seen it in games. But looking at a shot and looking at his pretty solid free throw shooting, he isn't as far off of being a passable shooter if need be. Now, my assumption is it's unlikely he would be called on to be any sort of three point shooter, as unless he's become just an absolute laser from three out of nowhere, his interior game is always going to be more efficient. But him having the ability to take them and make them is definitely something the NBA teams would want to see. Now, Zach Eady is an underrated playmaker at the center position. No, he's not by any means a point guard level passer, but the fact of the matter is he's gotten very good at making reads out of the post and kicking it to the right man when he draws in the defense. If you're an NBA team, that's all you're going to ask of him. You're not asking Edy to do anything extraordinary when it comes to passing, but when you have him on the floor, you want to see him be able to kick it out of doubles, which even in the league, he will be getting double teamed if he's in the post. Like I said earlier, his problem will not be offensively. It will be on the defensive end. He will be able to score because even in the NBA, there are very few guys that will be able to guard him at his size and strength. So if you can see him deliver a pass out of a double team to stop him from scoring accurately to a shooter, that is all you need from him. Now the biggest concern when it comes to Zach Eady's translation to the NBA is going to be his defense, and that concern is totally valid. 
Edie, for what it's worth, has some solid defensive traits and they all pretty much revolve around his strength as an interior presence. Edie will without a doubt continue to be a very good rim protector, he reads the opposition well, rotates well, has good timing on his blocks. Not that he needs all that much in the way of timing anyway considering he's 7'4", but his timing is good for what it's worth. Opposing players will likely struggle to get shots off on the interior if he is stationed in the paint. His size is a positive in this aspect, but could easily be considered the biggest negative as far as his defense goes as well. The problem is, of course, the fact that he's not switchable whatsoever. His foot speed is very much still below par, and pulling him out on the wing versus a stretch five that can move, or on a switch versus a wing or even a guard would definitely be problematic. This all being said, one of the primary reasons you see him rising on draft boards is the fact that he's actually improved this aspect of his game. It isn't good enough to where it can be considered a positive or even a neutral, but it has gotten better. He does a fair enough job on switches that I feel as though if the situation arises where he does have to switch, he may be able to hold his own on occasion. The two easiest comparisons to make for Zach Eady are Boban Ojanovic and Yao Ming. Maybe these are cop-out answers because everyone brings up these two players, but really when you get a player that's a 7-4 post-up big, there's not that many players to compare him to. I will say he may be a little bit of a mixture of the two. I don't think he's quite as good as Yao, but I do think he will be better than Boban in the NBA. The difference to me comes down to his skill set. I just believe he's more skilled than Boban overall. I think he's got better post moves, I think he's a better playmaker, and I think he's more consistent as a finisher. I do not, however, think he will be anywhere near as dominant as Yao Ming was. Obviously the first reason for that is because Yao played in an era that was more friendly to back to the basket bigs. Even taking that into account though, Yao Ming showed that he had the ability to stretch the floor as he was actually a very consistent mid-range shooter, and Edie has not shown any degree of a jump shot compared to what Yao could do. People forget how insanely good Yao Ming was, not just as a post player, but in the mid range as well. He was a very skilled player for 7'6". He was also more agile than Edie, even being bigger than him. So really when it comes down to it, Zach Edie is somewhere in between. I think he will be better than Boban, I do not think he will be as good as Yao, but he does play similar to both of them. In the end, we've been seeing a little bit more respect for Zach Edie in the mock draft conversations, and to me, I think that's rightfully so. Edie is not an immobile, injury-prone big man like other guys we've seen at that height. Obviously, he's very limited as far as his skill set, but there's a place in the NBA for a guy to come off the bench like Zach Eady as a rim protector and a finisher in the paint, go to work in the in and out game when the opposing team has a more traditional big, and so on. Do I think he will be great? No, not necessarily, but I do think he has the ceiling of a solid starter on a decent team, especially if he can get his jump shot to come around. I think the most likely outcome for Edie is you're going to see a very solid bench player that could come in situationally and make a difference for any team really. Overall, even with his limitations, I definitely see the argument that he should be drafted somewhere in the late first. When you take a look at late first type players, most of them do fall out of the league very quickly anyway, so you can get a guy here like Edie who I think is virtually guaranteed to be some degree of a difference maker while he's in the league. I mean, let's be honest here, the guy is great, he just doesn't fit in the modern NBA. If you can get a guy with that level of guarantee to be at least solid and do some things very well, which I do think he will be, then I think if you're a competitive team that needs that extra dynamic off the bench, why wouldn't you take someone like him just as a bench piece as a backup center and if he ends up being better than that, that's great. I think he has the potential to be better than that, but I do think his floor is actually very high when all things are said and done, and I do think he's a worthwhile pick at least in the late first. But with that, we conclude this video. It's been quite a while since I last uploaded. I decided to go back to the roots and focus on draft scouting reports as those do seem to be my most high quality videos and the majority of viewers seem to enjoy these the most. So expect more and more of these as we enter into the draft season. But with all that, hope you guys enjoy. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click on one of these videos here to see more.